Hey guys, so today's video is going to be a Q&A all about going back to school. I thought I would do like a Q&A video where you can ask me anything you want on going back to school and I will try my best to answer and help you guys out. The first question is, what was your favourite subject? Oh, that's a tricky one. I think probably my favourite subject at school was drama, just because it was like a little bit different to all of the typical sitting down lessons, and I did really enjoy it, like I did it for GCSE. The next question is, what GCSE slash A levels did you take? Oh my god, this is going to test me. Okay, so GCSEs, I took maths, English, ICT, business, triple science, so biology, chemistry, physics, uh, history, French, drama, music, philosophy and ethics, and I think that's about it. And A levels, in my first year at college I did law, French, philosophy and English literature, and then I dropped English literature and just did law, French and philosophy. One of the questions that came up a lot was how do you deal with stress during GCSEs? The one thing that I find so annoying these days is the amount of pressure that schools put on people who are taking their GCSEs. Of course at the time you are so wrapped up in it and you're having all these people tell you you have to do well, you have to do well, that you don't actually really take a step back and look at the bigger picture. You can't really because you're only 15, 16 and you can't really predict the future. What I would say for stress during GCSEs, the most important thing is balancing your time. My huge mistake, because I made myself incredibly ill during my GCSEs, was to just completely cut all my friends off and make like GCSE period an isolating horrible period where all I would focus on was my exams, revising, I had to do well. I didn't really realise at the time because I was just so determined, like I'm such a perfectionist. What I would suggest is make sure you allocate time to yourself. So make sure you even schedule in a bubble bath, painting your nails, going out and doing some shopping, anything that you like doing for yourself to have some me time. Also allocate space to spend time with friends and family. I know you might want to spend a lot of time revising during GCSEs or some people might be the opposite and they might not actually revise enough, plan things that you can do together and I feel like once you've got things planned, like if say I knew I was seeing my friend in the evening, I could then plan my revision in the day, so yeah. Tip number one, manage your time. Tip number two is just being organised. I don't know about you, but when I feel like everything is organised and under control, then like the situation feels under control. I made like mind maps on every single thing in a subject that I needed to do. There's a couple of questions on starting GCSEs. <sighs> it's all very well me saying this, but honestly, don't worry. The first couple of GCSEs, I don't know what it's like now, but I think the first one I did was business in year nine, and I was allowed to take sweets into the exam room. Keep it chill, I think everything's gonna be okay, and yeah, like, it, it's something that you have to do. You might as well make the experience as enjoyable as you can. The more you think about it and the more you stress about it, the worse it's gonna be when you come to start them. So honestly, like, everyone's gonna be going through the same thing as you. Just go with the flow. How to stop procrastinating and get motivated. I think this is definitely something that a lot of people, including me, can relate to. When there's something big that needs to be done, I will do every little thing that I can possibly think of, including things that I don't even like doing, to avoid, say, doing my revision. I think my point earlier that I mentioned about, like, sort of dividing your time really helps with this, because then you know if you're doing something later, if you've got something planned, then you need to get this done now. So sit yourself down, if it's revision, do short 15 minute bursts, and after every 15 minutes you can have a line of chocolate just something to like motivate yourself I think food is definitely a good one for that or you can say if I 
do like say an hour of revision today then I'm gonna treat myself to a new top see if your mum will order you dominoes that night if you do a certain amount of revision in the day like you guys can think of the ideas to suit yourselves tips on how to stay organized when starting your GCSEs I think the most important thing because I didn't actually know what was going on I just kind of went along with it is to know like sort of as soon as you can when your exams are, what the exam is and what you need to know for it. It might be good to get like revision folders and stuff that you can just shove all of your stuff into and like as your lessons are going along make sure that you keep like recapping them. How did you decide what GCSEs you were going to take? Um, I just went on the subjects that I enjoyed the most and that I did well in. So like for my options um, I took two kind of academic and then two kind of more enjoyable ones. So for the academic ones I took history which was like modern world history and then I took French. I actually really like French. I went on to do it at A level and my mum's a French teacher which was like super helpful for revision and stuff. And then for drama and music I used to play the piano and I was quite good at it so I guess like music was that option and then I just really enjoyed drama. I had to do triple science because I was in like the top set. So there are a couple questions on my best revision tips. Obviously I've already talked a little bit about it but as for the actual revision my tips would be number one organization like I said have folders and sections like just for everything I really like mind maps that might not work for other people I also really like making the little note cards which have got like the condensed information on it as well revision guides I found were really helpful just if I wanted to go over a certain topic or something um, and also ask your teachers for help like if you want to do any extra sessions I know I stayed after school and stuff and went at lunchtime um, if I didn't understand something and I wanted to get better at that then I would do that and also practice practice exams are like the best thing that you can do obviously you need to know the information first um, but you can just do like specific questions and stuff and then when you get up to the point where you're ready to actually take the exam then you can just do like little practice tests and something but make sure you always keep it like really nice and fun I know I say fun like revision obviously isn't fun but make sure that you like reward yourself at the end of it like I mentioned before with food or going out to the cinema that night or having a Chinese like whatever it is make sure you keep the kind of vibe chilled and please guys don't get caught up in this whole you must get a stars business i was devastated when i didn't get x amount of a stars in the end i got like six a stars seven a's and two b's and i cried because i was disappointed in myself and i wish at the point i'd sort of realized the value of my health and happiness above stupid GCSEs which I'm not going to care about in a few years because I became a YouTuber. GCSEs, although they seem like it at the time, are not everything. Just do the best you can under the circumstances. Pat on the back to you if you manage to get through them and get out the other side. Okay, so there's a couple of questions on anxiety during school, specifically like if you have to either go into a new class or if you have to stand up and speak in front of the class. I got really, really anxious anxious about these things as well. So in terms of like going into new classes, obviously I can understand that is like the most nerve wracking thing, like I would personally hate to do that now. But you need to think of the positives. You'll probably know some of the people in there already. Obviously different schools have different rules for like the seating and stuff, but you might be put next to someone which kind of takes away that pressure of choosing someone to sit next to. Um, and if you have to choose, just go with someone that you kind of know if it's your friends then great you're in a new class it's a new year you're about to learn loads of new exciting stuff I know obviously you don't feel like it's that way if you get anxious obviously there are things that you can do like focus on your breathing breathe in for three breathe out for three or just do little brain exercises like go through the alphabet and think of a fruit beginning with each letter but obviously if you're in a lesson that might be a bit difficult to do so if you do feel anxious just embrace Embrace it and feel it and accept that you are feeling anxious. There's nothing wrong with that. There's going to be people in the class who are feeling the same as you too. As for standing up in front of the class,
podcast, you just gotta pretend that you're talking to like your family or to your dog, just visualize that your dog sat there and act. Even if you're feeling so, so anxious inside, just act like you're not, pretend you're someone else and you're super confident and you love talking in front of the class. On the topic of meeting new people and making new friends, I just wanted to share with you guys this new app which I have seen everyone using. You might already have it but it's called Lovu and it's basically an app where you can find people around you who have the same interests as you, so people who live like in the same area as you. You click on this little radar thing to see what's going on around you and basically it's a little bit like Instagram where you can upload photos so I have uploaded loads of photos which are not on any of my social media sites so if you want to see them then go follow me I will leave a link in the description below for you guys so you can come and find me and see pictures like this of me Elliot and Lola driving around in my new car you can like other people's photos you can follow people it just makes making friends like super easy <laughs> You don't have to actually do anything in real life anymore. You can just go onto the app. There are a few questions about bag essentials. My definite school bag essentials would have to be, obviously like all your stationery, so like pens, pencils, rulers, rubbers. Make sure you're equipped so you don't have to always borrow off other people. And be careful who you lend your pens to because you might not get them back. And then obviously any equipment that you might need for maths, like calculators and stuff you need. And then, girls, I would definitely suggest bringing a hairbrush with you personally. I like to have that with me because my hair just tends to turn into a mess throughout the day. Although when I was at school, I used to literally just shove it up in a messy bun. Maybe some dry shampoo as well. I know a lot of you will not be allowed to wear makeup. Don't worry, like I'm sure you will do. I did from like, I think year eight onwards and somehow, my Managed to get away with it. There were a couple of questions actually on like kind of makeup for school and how to make it look like you're not wearing much. Try and keep your base like really light so maybe a tinted moisturiser and then just use concealer on all your spots. Maybe a tiny little bit of blusher and then fill in your eyebrows lightly with a pencil and then maybe a little bit of mascara and that's honestly all you need. And then what else do you bring to school? Okay, obviously all your books and stuff. Maybe like hand sanitizer, chewing gum, even though you're not supposed to have that in school, but it will make everyone love you. And then obviously your phone, even though you're probably not supposed to go on that during lessons anyway. Oh yes, and then also lunch and snacks. Okay, so there's then a couple of questions about friendships especially girls, how do I deal with girls who constantly leave me out or make little comments which hurt my feelings. If you want to know more about like the friendship aspect of things, go and watch my bitchy girls video and my friendships video, that will give you a lot more sort of advice on those topics. Okay guys, so that is it for the Q&A. Remember your health and happiness are the most important things and please make sure that you plan your time so you can have that nice balance between social life and school and you make time to do things for yourself. Talking of doing things for yourself, I've talked about this website Opinion Outpost a few times but I thought it was kind of relevant in this video because obviously a lot of you guys are at school and doing your GCSEs so you don't really have that much time to make money. Basically they pay you to take surveys. They've given me a link for you guys to go and check out the website and I really hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did like it and I will see you very soon. Bye!